There's a lot of stuff to talk about on today's episode of the Locked On the Global podcast from Kevin Coleman Jr. possibly being in addition to the Global wide receiver room to Jarvis Brownlee returning and William Fowles showing out at the Under Armour All-American Bowl. There's a lot of stuff to talk about, so let's get right on into the show. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everyone? Welcome in to another episode of the Locked On the Louisville Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. Today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. As always, I want to say thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. Just a reminder that the Locked On the Global podcast is free on all streaming services five days a week. Your team, every day. It's all about football on today's episode of the Locked On the Global podcast from Jackson State wide receiver transfer Kevin Coleman Jr., possibly being in addition to next year's team. Um, William Fowles, the four-star wide receiver signee, showing out at the Under Armour All-American Bowl and why he could be primed for early playing time next season. And then finally, we'll talk about defensive back Jarvis Brownlee announcing that he is returning for 2023. So we'll start out with um, Kevin Coleman Jr. Uh, Kevin Coleman, 5'11", 170 pound freshman from Jackson State, native of St. Louis, Missouri. This past season, 33 receptions, 510 yards, and three touchdowns, averaged 15.5 yards per, per reception, per reception, um, entered the transfer portal. You would assume that he probably would follow uh, Coach Prime at Colorado. Uh, Deion Sanders doing a great job of recruiting so far, but according to Jody Dimling of Cardinal Authority's 24-7 sports site, and um, the guys over at Rivals, Dave Lackford and Ty Spaulding, it seems like that there is a visit possibly in the works for Kevin Coleman Jr. this weekend. Obviously, with the spring semester starting next week, with Coleman possibly visiting, that's not just one of the situations of a guy's going to visit just to visit. If you're visiting, that means that there is sincere um, you know, interest, you know, presumably from both sides. So um, this would be a huge addition for many reasons. I think, number one, you lose a guy like DeAndre Moore um, in the early signing period. Kevin Coleman Jr. is very similar to DeAndre Moore skill set-wise, both being, you know, sub-six-foot receivers that you utilize speed and solid route running, uh, the ability to create separation. Like DeAndre Moore, Kevin Coleman uh, was a highly rated guy coming out of high school. Um, in the 2022 class, he was ranked the, I'm sorry, the 2021 class, he was ranked the uh, 54th best prospect in the country. Um, so obviously you have a guy that, was very, very solid uh, coming out of the uh, Midwest in the Missouri area. Like I said, 33 receptions, 510 yards this past season for uh, Jackson State. And if you're Louisville, this is a possible addition that could put a very, very solid uh, finishing touch on the wide receiver room. Uh, for 2023. You've done a good job so far. You've got guys coming back. You've got Amari Huggins, Bruce, Braden Smith, Chance Morrow, Chris Bell. You have um, some transfers coming in. Jaden Thompson from Cincinnati. Uh, you know, Jimmy Callaway from Tennessee. Some high school guys. William Fowles, who we're going to talk about in the second segment. Jalil McClain, Kataris Hicks from the Flyville 23 class. So, but you need a guy, in my opinion, that could possibly be, you know, a presumed wide receiver one. And I think that despite him being under six feet, I think that Coleman offers that possibility. And if you sort of look at Jeff Brom's offense, obviously he's done a great job with taller receivers, um, you know, with uh, David Bell, Milton Wright, but also he's done a very good job with smaller receivers, Rondell Moore, uh, Charlie Jones, so on and so forth. So I think that Kevin Coleman is one of those guys that if he were to come to Louisville, you're possibly thinking this guy could get to a thousand yards next season. 
Um, I want to read to you what um, Alan True, national recruiting analyst of 24-7 Sports, said about Coleman back in um, actually uh, literally a year ago tomorrow on January 3rd, 2022. Um, and I think he's actually part of the 2022 class, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yes. 2022 class, not 2021. Uh, but he was ranked as the sixth best receiver in the country, number one in the state of Missouri. This is what Allen had to say. He does great with these um, scouting reports. Projected him as a second-round selection in the future um, and compared him to the Pittsburgh Steelers wide receiver Deontay Johnson, who um, you watch both of them play. They have very similar skill sets. This is what True had to say. Very quick Sudden prospect who creates a lot of separation with his explosiveness out of his breaks. Makes cuts at full speed, excellent in the open field, has good time speed, and accelerates quickly. Very good hands and ball skills. Catches the ball comfortably away from his body and in traffic over the middle. Has to keep getting stronger. Not the biggest receiver, but fits very well in today's spread out offenses. Will be a playmaker who can work short to intermediate routes and go the distance after the catch, has also made plays as a return man and Wildcat quarterback and can score in a variety of ways, polished and competitive, which can lead to early impact at the next level and a potential career after college. Um, it's worth noting that um, as a junior in 2022, he scored 12 touchdowns in just four games in a shortened season, also was a very solid track star, um, but nonetheless, regardless, I think Kevin Coleman would be a huge addition to the team. Now, granted, it's not a done deal. I don't have any inside information, but a guy this high, highly regarded coming out of high school, a solid 500 yard season as a freshman, granted it was at Jackson state, still very talented. Um, you know, we've seen guys at that level come to the power five and just show out. We saw Tyler Hudson do that uh, just a season ago. So I think that um, you're probably going to have to battle off Colorado. You're probably going to have to battle off some other highly rated places, but let's just assume that Louisville were to um, secure a commitment and he were to enroll at the Cardinals program or at the university for the program for the spring heading into 2023. Let's play the hypothetical game. I think he checks off the boxes that you're looking for um, for Jeff Brom and company. Um, number one, you get a guy that is very, very solid after the catch. Now, granted, I think that there's multiple guys on this roster that possess that potential, and people will say, oh, well, last year they, they didn't show it. Well, you ran a passing scheme that was dominated by running the football about 60% of the time. Um, I don't think that the route trees were all that great. I know that hindsight is 2020. Um, but this year, I think that it, it doesn't, um, you know, seem far fetched whatsoever to suggest that the passing scheme is going to be leaps and bounds better than it was just a year ago. So um, ultimately, Kevin Coleman is a guy that adding him to this roster with guys like Amari Huggins, Bruce, uh, William Fowles, um, Jaden Thompson, Jimmy Callaway, Chris Bell, Braden Smith. You go from a very, I would say promising wide receiving core to, hey, this could be one of the best wide receiving cores in the ACC. That's how good Kevin Coleman is. I think that um, he could be in line with guys like Rondell Moore and Charlie Jones to be a player that um, just has a meteoric rise statistically. Granted, I think Omari Huggins-Bruce is also a candidate to fill that role, but um, you can never have too much explosiveness, and obviously that helps with depth as well. You add another receiver to the mix. Um, so not only are you increasing quality depth, but you're off offering another starting option. I think that Kevin Coleman is a day one starter. Also, you have D. Wiggins. Don't forget about D. Wiggins returning, as I literally just did for the first nine minutes. Sorry about that, D. But um, yeah, D. Wiggins, a guy that's played a lot of Power 5 football, a taller receiver, but you have a guy... Um, in Kevin Coleman that um, you know has that potential, that yards after catch ability, that explosiveness after the catch. Um, very, very excited if Louisville were able to get him on campus. So um, uh, I think that something that we're going to have to watch heading into the weekend, it seems like this could be a very interesting weekend for the Louisville football program coming up. Um, speaking of wide receivers, well, four-star signee William Fowles is absolutely tearing it up at the Under Armour 
All-American camp and game. We'll talk about what he's doing and why he could be primed for early playing time as well next season here in just a second after we talk about our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. As a small business owner or hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on the team members you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your goals. It helps you quickly attract qualified candidates. Look, LinkedIn goes beyond resume data by using insights from your job post company and their 875 million member profiles to put your post in front of. Identify the most qualified candidates on LinkedIn Jobs. Um, Look, LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Hey, Cardinal fans, thanks again for making Locked On Louisville your first listen every day. Make sure to check out Locked On Sports today. The biggest stories around the sports world in 20 minutes or less, plus instant reactions, game recaps, and Locked On's take of the day. Locked On Sports today, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Heading right on along, obviously the Adidas All-American, Under Armour All-American games are um, heading into the weekend or will be happening over the weekend. And a lot of Louisville guys have been standing out. Perhaps no one has stood out more than four-star wide receiver William Fowles. The, um, actually, technically right now he's rated as a three-star, um, but he was a four-star for most of the season. Um, makes you wonder with how rankings work with – Stephen Heron being a three-star somehow um, in the transfer rankings. Um, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but all of Louisville's guys have pretty much dropped, and I I don't really believe that, um, especially when you watch the film from William Fowles, ranked as the 526th best player in the country, uh, was in the top 400, the top 375 uh, leading up here just a couple – weeks ago i believe but nonetheless he's showing why seemingly rankings don't mean anything or at least not that much um according to um ryan wright uh rivals.com national recruiting analyst he had this to say about william fowles fowles didn't have a crazy season statistically the Louisville signee has all the tools height weight and speed but hasn't been able to showcase what he can do since the seven on seven season jump to lining up against top defensive backs in Orlando. And we're seeing what fouls can do when given a chance. What has popped out with fouls thus far is his route running and hands fouls catches everything cleanly, giving a big window for his team phantom quarterbacks, JJ Cole and Avery Johnson. That didn't stop all the praise. Um, you look at what uh, Wright wrote after day two, he said, William fouls is showing all the tools. The Louisville sign is the Louisville signee is a pigskin catching machine with Kansas State signee Avery Johnson and Iowa State signee J.J. Cole delivering the rock. Fowles' hands look as clean and natural as any other receiver participating in the All-American game. Adding to it, Fowles', uh, Fowles routes were crisp and smooth. During the one-on-ones, Fowles had some nice receptions with a standout haul against Georgia signee Justin Rett. Fowles is that big receiver with speed that can create problems all over the field. Rhett is ranked as the 210th best player, according to rivals. Um, Bishop Gorman, defensive back, four-star guy that signed with Georgia. So I think that, you know, I think that we're starting to see, you know, maybe the high school, um, the high school season wasn't the greatest for Fowles. Um, you know, playing for Dade Christian School in the Miami area, six foot two, one hundred ninety five pound receiver that chose the Cardinals um, back over a couple months ago. Um, in two thousand twenty one, he had forty seven catches for eleven hundred yards and nineteen touchdowns as a junior for a team that went six and four. So ultimately, I think that maybe the statistics might not have been as strong as they were. Uh, from his standpoint as a junior, as they were a senior. But um, regardless, look, I think that this can be taken two ways. Number one, you're in a camp setting, so there's a lot more than just one-on-ones. Seven and sevens don't mean everything. You don't um, look at the game as a whole. It's a game without pads and things of that nature. 
Um, it's an all-star event, so maybe guys aren't trying the hardest here and there. But I think you can flip that argument on its head and say, well, he's going up against some of the nation's best talent across the country in one-on-one settings, um, in settings that every single other top guy is going up against in these uh, drills and routines, activities, so on and so forth. And William Fowles is standing out. So I think that um, you know he's a guy that – when I saw, or when I when I saw, when I looked at the final early signing day class, or that had been announced, um, I saw that uh, William Faust, in my opinion, was a guy that I looked at. And when I talked with Ethan Moore about guys that could have been seeing the field early on, I didn't mention William Faust. I should have. I think that Fowles is a guy that, you know, maybe he's going into a wide receiver room where there's not a lot that we can kind of base it off of right now. There's not a lot to know what to expect. There's a lot of moving parts. Um, You would assume that Amari Huggins-Bruce is a starting receiver. If Kevin Coleman enrolls at Louisville, he's going to be a starting receiver. Outside of that, we're kind of up for grabs. The spots are up for grabs, obviously with Louisville being a passing offense. You would assume that there's definitely a good amount of opportunity. So um, looking at this from the standpoint of, you know, who is going to start at, you know, the other receiver or be in the qual or the the um, the quality depth. Um, you know, fouls being six foot two, 195, you know, guys that fit that mold on the team, Chris Bell. Uh, Jaden Thompson, Jimmy Callaway. I know that D Wiggins is a little bit bigger than that. So is Chance Morrow. Uh, but those are the guys that um, really fit that mold with Jaleel McClain, Kataris Hicks, uh, Braden Smith being smaller receivers. I think that um, I think that Bell is primed for a solid season. But I do think that William Fowles is a player that, you know, coming from the, the South Florida area, a type of recruit that Louisville has really done well with over the past handful of years, dating back to the Stra- Charlie Strong days, and even before that, guys that get overlooked in the city of Miami, the South Florida area, William Faust seems to be one of those guys. I'm not going to say that every guy that commits from the South Florida area is going to be a diamond in the rough prospect, but when you look at what he's doing in Under Armour camp, you look at what he did as a junior, you look at what he did in the seven-on-seven circuits in the summer last year, I think he's primed to be a guy that, you know, maybe he's not a thousand yard receiver right away, obviously, but I think that he's a guy that could get to about 250 yards receiving possibly next season. I think that he's got the tools, a solid route runner, a reliable pass catcher, guy that can create separation, um, but just a player that, you know, from the South Florida area that has gotten overlooked. So ultimately, I look at William Fowles as a possible immediate contributor maybe not until halfway through the season but uh you never know there's a lot of playing time up for grabs for the Louisville Cardinals next season in the wide receiver room why couldn't William Faust put his name into the mix and compete for significant substantial reps in the starting offense for the Louisville Cardinals I I, outside of inexperience I, I can't really look in and see one I don't think that um, there is a glaring hole in his game. Um, obviously, he can get better, um, but you know, from a athleticism standpoint, route running, his hands, you know, uh, just reliability, um, creating separation. He's got what you're looking for as a receiver in Jeff Brom's offense. So William Fowles is a guy that I'm looking to possibly be an immediate level contributor next season. Speaking of contributing next season, um, the Cardinals got back a uh, guy that produced last year. Jarvis Brownlee Jr. has announced that he's returning to the Cardinals defensive back room in 2023. We'll talk about what that means for the team here in just a second after I tell you about my friends over at BetOnline. BetOnline BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from pro football to college bowl season, basketball, and more. We've got you covered at betonline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can even find those there as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline is where the game starts. 
Thanks again, everyone, for making Locked on the Wolf your first listen of the day. 2023 is upon us. Um, obviously, um, like I said, went over 1,000 subscribers recently, so I do want to say thank you all for that. Um, so if you have any suggestions on content, guests, so on and so forth, feel free to leave a comment in the section below. And if you disagree or agree or have a you know an idea about what I've said in a certain episode, Definitely voice your thoughts. It's all about having a discussion. This show is for you all. And um, I, I do this daily, or I try to do this daily, for you all. So, um, meanwhile, final segment of the show. Florida State transfer Jarvis Brownlee played for the Cardinals this past season. 51 solo tackles, 2 interceptions, 12 pass deflections, which was 15th nationally. He is back for the Cardinals in 2023 per his Twitter page. He had 66 total tackles, um, which was a career high, along with 51 total tackles, a career high, uh, 12 pass deflections over quadruple what he's ever had. Um, Two interceptions tied what he had last year for Florida State. Um, So I know that a lot of Cardinal fans have differentiating opinions on Jarvis Brownlee. Um, There were times this season where opposing offenses, um, they went at Jarvis Brownlee. They threw at him, and there were times where he got beat. You know, he got, um, you know, the short end of the stick. The wide receiver got the better of Jarvis Brownlee Jr. in certain situations, Um, which it is what it is. I think cornerback is one of the toughest positions to play in all of football um, in terms of defending a player. Um, But... The 5'11", 186-pound native of the Miami area announcing that he's coming back can only be viewed as a positive for the Cardinals in 2023. Regardless of what you think his ceiling is, regardless if you think he's an all-ACC level guy, and I don't, I'm not arguing that he is, uh, but I think he's definitely quality depth at the very, very least. Um, my starters next season. Now, great. So, look, here's the thing about it is that you also can't overlook the base package that's rumored for next year is a 425. 425, for those that don't know, utilize, you know, variety and versatility at the defensive back position. Five defensive backs, you know, um, going from safety, cornerback, uh, slot cornerback, um, whatever may have you. You know, the, it sort of doesn't utilize linebacker play as much, but it allows you to you know, utilize the defensive backs in those positions. Now, I look at Jarvis Brownlee as a boundary cornerback, so I'm not necessarily looking for him to go more so on the inside like I would for Miles Slusher. I don't think that he projects as a safety like Devin Neal Jr. Um, But then again, you know, I'm just an armchair quarterback at this point. He may be looked at at Jeff Brom and think, you know, he could play inside or, you know, he could play in at safety in certain situations. But right now, you'd have to assume that he's projected as a cornerback. But this can only be viewed as a good thing for the Cardinals. I really do believe that. There were certain situations to where I think that he got targeted by opposing offenses, and those opposing offenses, um, they executed in that way. I think that um, Jarvis Brownlee, there were times to where he didn't necessarily play the greatest. I think that there were times where he looked solid. Central Florida this past year had a key turnover. I, I think that uh, there were portions of this year where he looked solid, some portions where he wasn't the greatest. But regardless, at the end of the day, I look to see him in the two deep coming next fall. Uh, if you made me project the starters for next season, it would be Quincy Riley and Marquise gross Killebrew, the transfer from Texas A&M. But I do think that um, you know Jarvis is a rotational player in Jeff Brom's defense next fall. Um, and, you know, he could be a guy that plays the majority of the snaps one game or a handful of games. And if there are injuries in the cornerback's room, it's a solid addition. Um, people will say, oh, well, if he's not the greatest cornerback, why would you want him back? Well, depth has been an issue defensive backwise. I understand you've got Slusher back. I understand you brought in Devin Neal. I understand that, you know, you got Marquise gross Killebrew, But you lose some guys. I understand, you know, Derek Edwards is back. But... Keetra Clark, Chandler Jones, both of those guys are gone. Those are guys that played a ton of snaps for the Louisville Cardinals over the past couple of seasons. You can use veteran leadership in that position group. Regardless if he's going to be a starter or not, and I'm not saying whether he is or not, um, but you get a guy that's played for this team. He's had some solid moments. Um, obviously, there's room for growth. Um, you know, you would look to see him take that next step 
in his coverage abilities next season, but he was solid as a tackler from the defensive back position, you know, 66 total tackles, which is solid for a cornerback. Um, I think that, you know, he gets criticism from the fan base, which, you know, is warranted at times, but there, I think it's also unfair as well at times, because I think that he's a lot better than what people are making him out to be. So ultimately, um, I'm excited that he's back. I think that this is really good news. I think those that are looking at this like it's what, why? I don't, I don't see that point of view. I mean, I guess I see what you're saying, but I don't, I don't, I don't agree with it. I think that you know, at the very least, it's um, quality depth for a position that for the past couple seasons has been an issue. So I understand you're, you're bringing in Aaron Williams. Aaron Williams was playing with a torn ACL. He is going to have surgery. There's no guarantee whether he's going to be back this upcoming season. And if he is, it'll probably be later in the year. If he's even back for the first of the year, look, he's a guy that wouldn't have played in the fall season in fall camp. And you're expecting a true freshman to come right away. It's hard to truly um, grasp. So um, I'm excited for Jarvis Brownlee to come back. Hopefully the Louisville Cardinals can get a commitment from Kevin Coleman and obviously William Fowles tearing it up at the Under Armour All-American camp. Um, But that's going to wrap up this special Monday edition of the show. Everyone have a great day. We'll see you right back here very soon.